This project falls firmly into the category of projects I may have regretted starting. You see, I was playing about with uh, the 3D printer and I thought, you know, it'd be quite cool to print 3D fairy lights. And I thought, you know what would be better? Imagine if you could then pot them in resin and you could use them outdoors. I'm not sure how the stuff would hold up to that. The PLA is supposedly biodegradable, but I don't think it would biodegrade that fast. Let me just fetch an exhibit here. I styled it upon the classic municipal Christmas lights, which have got heavy rubber cable and they've got heat shrink sleeves, two of which I have removed, uh, which cover the cables. And they basically, they, well, they cover this little pot, a little plastic tube. And the way this is dealt with, you, in the, the first one here, they've got a little wiring form. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, let's zoom down just a little bit so you can see it. But they've got a little wiring clamp and support, like you find in traditional fairy lights, like these ones, but a bit bigger. And this was the first one, the string, I thought, oh, that'll be the same throughout them. It's just to hold it in. It's to separate the wires because they've got two of these big rubber cables on one side and one the other. And they pop, put resin into this and then they obviously just slide this in and there's resin everywhere. It must be a horrible job in the factory. But the next one didn't have that little former. It actually had just the well-spaced leads and they are ultimately well-spaced just by the fact they're pushed in parallel and they're, they've got the thick rubber insulation. But it also has a little resistor in here with the colour of which is blue, grey, brown. That's uh, black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. So six grey uh, is 68, one zero, 680 ohms. So they've got, a, because this runs directly from rectified mains, they've got a multiple of these resistors in this string. And they just dissipate the power. I don't know why it's gone yellow inside. That's quite odd. It's gone yellow directly between those two. So that was the inspiration for this. Here's the thin heat shrink that's used to hide what's in there. It also stops you seeing where the resin probably hasn't gone into some of them. I've come across that before, where the resin didn't cover the copper. I shall put those down there and get back to what I created. So I thought, you know, it'd be quite good that you could put an LED in, you could pre-wire it, you could then shove it down, and there's a hole that's a, fr a friction fit, and it will go in, hold it in place, pot it with resin. It could actually sit down while you pot it. Not that it actually does sit down, it wants to do its own thing. I shall zoom back out a bit before I go way off shot. But then I thought, if I can do that, could I make waterproof neon lights? So I, I extended the, I made the dome cover the front so that the neon could go right into it. I shouldn't can demonstrate that by booking this up the back. You can maybe see the stick going inside that. Don't know if you can. Mm. But uh, this would also work well for these little lights if you wanted to try potting them. But bear in mind, it uses a lot of resin and it's very, very footery. If you had a continuous production line with one of those resin automated resin syringes that mixes them and squirts out measured portions, it wouldn't be so bad. Still a horrible job. Buy them. It's easier. But you can't buy waterproof neon lights. So I resized this. I, I created the closed end. This is basically... I started with a sphere, I then removed an inner sphere, so you had an outer spherical shell, and then chopped off a big block off the top, so you just had a little cup. Then I did some more additions, I added this cylinder, added a ball on the end, removed an inner cylinder, removed the ball, uh, a smaller ball from the inside, so you've got a clear tube up the inside, and laterally, not in these ones, when I saw that it was actually building, it built from the bottom up, when I saw that it was getting a bit rough at the bottom here, I added a slight taper to just get over that rough patch. But the idea is that if you get a neon lamp and you solder on a couple of resistors, two resistors in my case, because with the UK, it, it, a lot more voltage is dropped across the resistors. It just keeps them cooler. And solder the wires on. It's deep enough that it can cover that and theoretically cover the wires and sort of maybe kind of semi-grip them. I shall pot this one and you'll see just why you probably don't really want to do this because it's very messy. So let's get some resin. And I shall squirt some into the mixing bowl. I'll be generous. 
so that I'm not t trying to scrape out the last remnants. I shall suck it back up into the syringe. I shall put this cover round the right way so that I don't put the wrong one on the wrong tube and cause it to set inside. And then I shall use another coffee stirrer stolen from Conrad's. I go into Conrod's quite a lot. Conrod's is a local coffee shop uh, in Ramsey on the Isle of Man. It's owned by Connor Cummins. I mentioned it before. A racer most notable for having a terrible TT accident, but still also a very successful racer, still racing each year. So yeah, mix up the resin until you're ready. A good thorough mix. This is the theoretically the fast curing resin, but it's fairly cold here. I did warm it up in advance because if you don't, it's very, very viscous. And then here's the tricky bit. You try and drip that down the inside or scrape some on the edge and hope it goes down by gravity. It's not fun. If you had a little injection gun for putting the resin in, it would be so much easier. But at the moment, you just have to rely on it drizzling in. And if it kind of forms a little ear bubble underneath, it doesn't go down too well. And it's very footery and you get resin everywhere. But worse than that, if you're trying to do a few at a time, one inevitably takes longer than the others. And then you're kind of like halfway through it and then all the resin's set or gelling. It's, it, I can you guess that I'm not really recommending this as a project, not unless you really have all the correct gear for it. So I'm going to put a bit more resin in there. If any squirts out the top, it doesn't matter. I'll just scrape it off and put it back in the little mixing cup. This fetching fluorescent mixing cup, mainly because I couldn't get the clear ones that I usually get. Poundland used to do them. Uh, I didn't check that last time I was in Poundland. These little shot glasses make excellent resin mixing cups. They also make excellent shot glasses for measuring portions of liquor. Righty, I'm going to try that. Will this work? I'm going to take the knee in. It might be a good idea to have a spacer between the things, but I didn't. And I'm going to squish it in here. I think there's air trapped at the bottom of that. This is not necessarily good. Is it going to squirt everywhere? Is it going to be a squirter? It's pushing in. Some resin's coming out. See, this is really not not fun. It's very time-consuming. It's a labour of love. You'd have to really desperately want a set of neon fear lights to actually do this. And now that I've done that, uh, this now has to be supported upright because it won't support itself. It's got that dome underneath and it wants to fall over and spill resin everywhere. I shall take it off shot and lean it against something over there and try and keep it straightish. Right, okay. You can imagine with uh, multiple leads, if you're trying to loop with short leads to the other ones, it puts a lot of strain that wants to pull them out the resin. So it's, it's, yeah, it's not fun. Have I mentioned that it's not fun? But let me show you the end result, which is okay. Uh, this is the other one I did. It's the same thing, but with the sphere continued up to the top. So it goes a bit crystal end, but that's fine. I'm going to plug this into the mains. And each neon will draw roughly one milliamp. So this string will draw approximately five milliamps. Let me grab the quick test. The cliff quick test. And I have to say, just like the original neon fear lights that I based this on, the sort of plasma globish type ones, not plasma globes in the sense the sort of fingeries of light type plasma globes, but the uh, the type of plasma globes, it was just a, basically a phosphor coated globe with a neon exciter in the middle or a gas discharge exciter. If I plug these in, the that's them lit. Can you see them? Isn't it amazing? It's really lighting. It's really popping. I'm going to have to turn the light off. I turn the light off. It's not going to look very bright again. Oh, no. And then I take the exposure off. And there they are. OK, so they're not bright. Is that a good representation? Yes, it is a pretty good representation. The slight shimmer you're seeing is because they are lighting on each half wave of the sine wave. This is a green phosphor neon, this is a blue phosphor neon, the other ones are just bare orange neons. But you know what? It still looks okay. And it's novel. And they should theoretically last a very, very long time. And they are theoretically waterproof, although this is single insulated wire, so I'm not sure I'd trust it too much. 
But it was an interesting project. I think it might be easier to do this a project if you just made them for indoor use only. And I had a little guide that went in there and just went into the friction fit so a small dab of glue would hold everything in place and it just avoided the resin potting. I mean, it's nice that it is resin potted. It is nice you could theoretically use it outdoors, but it's not terribly practical. Um, but they could certainly be used with the LEDs, resin potted and used outdoors. But again, it's a lot of work. So um, I'm just going to pause momentarily and then I'll show you the other one lit once the resin has cured. That looks cured enough. It seems solid. Let's plug it in. It's going to be as bright as these other ones. I'm pretty sure I put 100 k resistors in those ones too. I'm just going to double check and see it through the plastic. I did use 100 k in this one. Suddenly I had this horrible feeling that I'd used 100 ohm. That would be exciting. Um, right. It glows dimly, very dimly. Now compare this with a blue LED. So I'll uh, take the exposure off. And I shall uh, show you what it would look like if I... Well, here's another shape. Uh, I don't know if you can really see this. It's a crystal shape. But if I fire a blue LED up that, just running at 10 milliamps, it just blows the neon away. But that's just because LEDs are so much more efficient that way. So it could affect that. Uh, the other shape I've got that I could try this in is the cup with the LED. Now, for reference, if you're interested in trying this, if you're an, a neon lover, so that's the little cup which just looks really bright. I like the fact it's very reflective. Uh, if you like the sort of neon stuff, then yeah, this is an interesting project. I shall include the open SCAD files for the, the sphere and the cup for the resin potted neon in the description of this video. So you can make them if you want. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it, it's an oddity. It's a novelty. It had to be done. I wanted to try it. It's quite novel to make a string of neon lights. But, uh, this is the other crystal. Uh, I've not put this file for this up yet because I'm still refining it. But this is a, a file with a just a very simple, it's got a little neck inside an angle so that an LED fit, fits quite closely and it helps it build it in the thing. So this build from the base upwards creates a, a fairly solid crystal and the end result is actually really nice. I'll try and compete with the lighting by putting it into the 20 milliamp setting but it shows, it creates this really lovely sort of spread of light through that. It's nice. This one's good. I'll have to work on some more because I quite like the idea of making custom strings of lights. But there we go. The waterproof neon 3D printed fair lights. Just another random folly. But, you know, it's fun to do.